Alright guys, well to continue our main beer, part two, if you will, um, so last time I think we had some sours for me, yeah, did. Um, this time we're going to have some hops for me. Sweet. So as awesome as they're doing in the sours, I think they're really blowing it out of the park with their hoppy beers. So today we have a couple. So first one we're going to go into is by Bissell Brothers, probably heard me mention it on last show. So Bissell is incredible. Um, I was up there a couple years ago. They were in that small industrial complex, churning out awesome beers. Next thing I know, about Maine the next year, they have their own huge brewery oh, facility out on Thompson's Point. Gigantic awesomeness. So um, definitely a testament to someone who started real small, grew, uh, you know, and expanded and has their own. I gotta say, it's probably a 50 barrel brewery. All right, so Baby Genius by Bissell Brothers, a hoppy, hazy session beer, electic and crushable. Electic. Wow. 4%. That's a cool looking can. The smell alone is awesome. It spanks you in the nose. I think it might be dry hopped. I don't know. What do you guys think? A little yeah. bit? A little bit, perhaps? Like, you know, a lot. 100, 200 pounds? <laughs> wow. So that's an expensive uh, beer if that's the case. Yeah, so for a 4% beer, it's packing all the qualities that I want in IPA. Oh, yeah. That's well oh, balanced. Yeah. I think, one I think their description for... of crushable is spot on. Yeah. I wish, again, we had a little more information in, as to hops and such, um, but it's such a pleasure to drink. I'm not going to complain too much. Let's get a bunch and we'll each crush a whole can. There you go. Mm. So, Beck, we've talked a little bit about hobby beers, mm -hmm. and last we talked, you were not necessarily um, a hop head, if you will. I wasn't. Oh, past so tense. So, this right. recent <laughs> trip that you had up to Portland, did that change some... I, uh... Yeah, I basically had a religious hop experience nice. in Portland, partially because of going to Bissell Brothers. Um, I had a Baby lot genius. of really interesting hobby beers, and I think just by brute force of trying so many of them, mm -hmm. my mouth figured out that they're actually really freaking awesome. There's a lot to it, right? Yeah, like, I was, I think I was describing Bissell Brothers as, like, the, the smartest brewery mm -hmm. that I tried. Like, everything's so complex and balanced, and they're not, like, the most outrageous beers, but they were all very, like, interesting hop blends and stuff, so that kind of helped me start to care that I hops see that. were good. I think Night Shift and Mass is similar. Yeah, and I think... The trend overall is, again, you know, to these hoppy, hazy, juicy, letting the hops come through with zero to no bitterness. Yes, mm -hmm. that's And I think that's why people me. didn't like IPAs for a long time is no one likes, well, some people don't like that bitter up front. Where Bissell has really hammered it down, it's like mm -hmm. Beck said, they're really like just taking all the awesome flavors out of that hop and putting yeah. them in the beer without the bitterness, which is awesome. I think so. it's a good representation of a, of a New England. IPA. You yeah. Know, it's yeah. got that haziness, yep. but it's got that hop Complexity. punch right in the face. You yep. know, it's like you walked right into a door of hops. It's and plenty of body for a 4% beer. Like, I've had mm. a lot of 4% session IPAs that were basically hop water. Yeah, too weak, not you know, thin. This not... is not hop water. Like, this has a little depth of flavor to it mm -hmm. um, where it's intriguing enough to keep coming back, but light enough where you're not going to be on the floor after, you know, three or four. So, yeah. Yeah, when I first tried an IPA, I think the flavors were very unbalanced. The the probably a West Coast style. I don't guessing. even remember at this point. I mean, I won't say which brewery it was from, but uh, it definitely was not balanced, yeah. and it was skunky in a bad way. But hmm. I don't think it was stored improperly. I think just the flavor was way off. This is the complete opposite. Well, up until about four years ago, you know, even on the East Coast here, we were drinking basically West Coast IPAs. Huge malt yep. with bitterness. Mm -hmm. And that was the style for many years. And, you know, I think 
I think you got to kind of credit um, Hedy Topper in a sense, mm -hmm. where Hedy Topper's still bitter, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but they really started, I think, that Balanced haze bitterness. craze. Um, and the hop flavor rather right. than the hop bitter. Exactly. You know, I think yep. that's that's a huge element in yep. a lot of the brewing going on. Right. I mean, I, I've seen beers that use absolutely no hop in that boil, yep. but they're still, you know, 50, 70 IBUs all right in a whirlpool yep. and just mm -hmm. right in your face in the glass. The smell is awesome. And I mean, you get one that is super drinkable like this, yeah. it's just wonderful. And I think with the haze, what a lot of people underestimate is the amount, we talked about it earlier, the amount of dry hops that are on this beer. Like, a lot of times people will say, well, dry hop is only going to impact the aroma. That's not 100% true. When you're dry hopping and the beer is still active, you are pulling out some yep. of those additional oils and flavors and things like that. So I think that's a big component in these beers as well. So Agreed. But kudos, Bissell Brothers. Yeah, excellent, excellent beer. I'd have to say there's a simple complexity here if that makes sense you know yeah, it's very it simple does. but yep. complex and i guess a good way to summarize that would be that it's very well balanced as we said absolutely delicious good stuff all right another nice looking can too nice cans i like the blues and the greens we get some information on this one yeah. oh there we go okay so this is from lone pine and it's called bright side ipa it's got some legs oh yeah wow chunky in there wow did you get the bottom must have well, you got the best stuff. So I'm not going to tell you anything about it until we... Alright. Wow. That's so different from the last one. Yeah. It is. Okay. That had a hidden malt body to it. Heavy-handed additions of Citra and Falconer's Flight. Excellent choices. Unfiltered and pasteurized, of course. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess a little less information than I have. But Citra and Falconer's Flight, crisp, ripe melon, assertive, complex, bright. Melon from the hops. Yes. Yeah. I think bright's a good name for that. You know, it. Mm -hmm. It is very bright. From. I like the malt backbone to it. It's it's more than the last one was, but it's. Mm -hmm. Very well blended. You can taste that malt there, though. And I think part of that, obviously, is your higher alcohol content. You're going to mm -hmm. have more malt in it. And you said citra as well? Citra and falcon yep. is like, yep. I'm guessing, yeah, you know, a little bittering, a little flavor, then probably a lot of late additions with the hops. I don't know. I mean, it smells great, but I, don't, I'm, I wouldn't say it's heavily dry hopped, like maybe some of these no, New England I style. Just enough, you know, to get it. I think what we're getting in our glass is a little bit of hot particulate, but also just a lot of yeast. Yeah. So. Any indication, The uh, I don't know if you've done some research, chatted with anyone, the types of yeast? I would think that this is a pretty clean yeast myself. Yeah. Maybe uh, an American ale. I don't... It doesn't I assume so. There's nothing that's right off the bat, okay, that's a yeast flavor. I mean, that's obviously easier to pick mm -hmm. up with Saisons and Belgians. Yeah. But typically, even in your IPAs, you can... You can pick up if there's yeast flavors in it. You know, uh, German beers a lot. You can taste that yeah, yeast. Mustard. And this is just a nice smooth, I think is the is a, mm -hmm. the best word, well-rounded smooth malt yep. body with enough hop in there to let you know, hey, I'm an American IPA and you're going to enjoy me. This beer does talk to you a little bit, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And I think it's still on the East Coast style. Like, it's definitely not... It flirts a little bit more with West Coast, but it's definitely not a West Coast IPA. Agreed. So, back our IPA person, how does this fit with your IPA um, tastes? Because it's a little different it's, than the ones we've drank and a little different than Bissell Brothers. I feel like it kind of splits the difference, almost, between, like, mm. the very IPA, New England IPAs and what I used to like, which was yep. more malty things. So it's That's actually, it's nice for me. Good. It's kind of, it reminds me of my past. Awesome. Do you awesome. think the the flavor, how would you guys say the flavor has evolved while you're drinking too? What, mm -hmm. what tones are coming through now that didn't upon your first sip? For me, the aromas, like I just pointed out, seems to be picking up. And then that, that melon really yeah. seems to come through. I think less and less hops per sip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think right off the bat, as Will was saying, you can smell that Falconer's, but as you sip it down, it's almost like the Citra and the yep. Falconer's flight are fighting back and forth. Mm. Over. You can taste this one and then this one almost coming yep. at you in waves. And now you're getting into hops like 007, Lemon Drop are starting to, you know, take the mantle. One of the things with people like jumping on board with uh, one hop, you know, we love this hop. Yep. Citra is an awesome hop. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I use it quite yeah. a lot. Yep. But if it's not used right, 
if it's used exclusively and too heavy, Cappy. you get exactly you get a very unpleasant <laughs> yeah. flavor from Is it. Is that why I thought I didn't like Citra Hops for so long? That could straight be straight cat pee. My wife okay. absolutely yeah. Yeah. hated Citra for that. the longest time because okay. that. But Citra paired yeah. with anything else, you get all that, the awesome exactly. Citra quality. Even just a yeah, tiny yeah. bit of Columbus or Founders Yeah, that actually, was, I, th- I yeah. think I saw one of your check-ins, and you were like. I do not like Citra, or Citra doesn't agree with me, or something uh, along yeah. those lines, so no, that's interesting. Normally, if I see Citra, I'm like, okay, I don't want this one, but I've been having more and more positive experiences with it, and if it's because people are using it in combination with better stuff, yep. then it makes sense. And Falconer's Flight's cool. Falconer's Flight is a blend of six or seven different hops, Citra included. And it's grown. That it, It's been blended. Someone developed this breed of hops, right? Nope. So they they oh, it's an actual it's yeah. They literally take Citra oh. and Columbus and oh, Cascade gotcha. and they. I thought you meant it was nope. grown as a hybrid. So it was developed hmm. as part of a, a fundraiser. I won't get into all those details. You look it up. It's kind of a really interesting story. Hmm. Falcon you Flight. Be, you won't be planting rhizomes of Falcon Flight. <laughs> That's interesting. It's it's actually it was a foundation that was set up to I believe help falcons, the actual bird, oh. because they were endangered. Yep. And it was a foundation set up to raise money for them. That or, makes sense with the name behind it. Yeah. Uh, so again, look it up. Um, Very interesting. But the the blends are awesome, and it was also developed during a period of time when there was a hop shortage. So everybody wanted the citrus of the world, and you know we couldn't all get them. So they're like, okay, the limited amount we have, we're going to blend with these other hops and make it yep. available to everyone. I remember so it was the, awesome. I think it was Falcon Seven Seas <clears throat> yep. is the other one. It's seven. Cascade, Columbus, Chinook, Cluster, yep. so on and Seed so forth. Yep. But very interesting what they do to pull those flavors together. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Yeah, and it's great to see that they're using it because it is a readily available hop, you know. Like, yeah, they're throwing citra out there. That's cool. Um, but also using using the falconers. Well, that's one of the things I love about that hop. I mean, you, you took <clears> something that was, okay, we need to pull stuff together to help out the brewer, to help out the home brewer, the entire brewing community. Let's make something for them because we have a shortage. They threw these together, and we loved it enough. Now you then now it's a regular product, just like Galaxy or mm-hmm. you know anything else. All right. Well, we drank a lot of Vermont beers. We drank a lot of Maine beers. I'm thinking maybe Mass sometimes. Mass, mass has some mass excellent beers. I, yes. I go to Mass pretty frequently. Yeah. I can grab some stuff. Connecticut's not too far away. I'm no. from Connecticut. <laughs> I know. I don't I'll just mule anything. Some <laughs> tree, you know, tree house, some yeah. two mm-hmm. roads, you know, things of that nature. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for bringing some Good beers. Stuff. Cheers. All right, today we're going to talk about hops, and more specifically, what do hops do to beer? So, I think we all know by now that hops bitter beer. They also do a lot of other things as well. So, what sort of other things does hops do to beer? Other things that hops will do to a beer, they add a very awesome aroma Mm, and flavor. Lots and lots of flavor. In some cases, most of the beer is dominated by the flavor of beautiful hops. Agreed. So hops can be used for bittering. Obviously, you know what that does. Uh, Flavor, flavor additions, like you just said, Um, and aroma. So depending on where you put those hops in the beer brewing process, you get different things. Um, So today we have some whole cone hops here, which are kind of cool. We have some hop extract here on each side. So depending on what product of hop you use is really going to depend on the final product so if you're not a hop head you should be one go out there get some hoppy beers enjoy them love them drink them hop to it all right we're going to talk about hops one of my favorite subjects today and more specifically fresh hops Um, we're coming into the harvest season here in the northeast which is a fine time of the year if you will so i think uh we're going to jump right in and talk a little about a bit about the varieties and how they're grown and all sorts of things like that so maybe we'll start by talking a little bit about how they're grown yeah what do you think so typically hops are grown at least on a commercial scale um, with trellis a trellis system so you're talking 18 to 20 foot high poles in a line with wire that runs up um, hops are pretty vigorous growers, um, so once they get started, they'll actually wrap themselves right around um, typically something that's called coir, 
which is coconut husk woven into a rope, which is kind of cool. You know, if we're growing in the backyard like you and I do as well, any sort of fibrous, yeah. thick rope You just want to keep in mind the weight. I know the plants get yes. extremely, like your your jute twine for your garden probably yep. won't hold up. Yeah. Um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I remember seeing, you know, one individual plant um, grown could average, you know, upwards of 20 pounds. I, if not I was, more, I was right? given much higher numbers. Okay, so, so there you go. Uh, full grown, I was told up to 60 pounds. For there a you whole go. Plant. So, you know, probably in your backyard, you might not hit 60, but even if yeah. you're hitting 30, um, you still want to take that into consideration. Exactly. Um, so, hops are kind of cool. They are a uh, perennial underground, yes. but an annual above ground. So, that means basically the top portion grows every year and you cut that right back. Um, and then underneath, it stays growing. It overwinters. Um, then that next year, all these shoots come up. So it's a question I get a lot, especially with the hop yard. You know, do you have to replant hops every year? Luckily, you don't. Um, you know, they have, it's, it's varying, but, you know, a 20-year life cycle. Um, yep. From what I've heard, you know, obviously um, the attributes change a little bit. The alpha acids which it. are in there change. Year to year, you're going to so. have different qualities exactly. and properties. Yep. I mean, soil, uh, you grow in your backyard. I Correct. grow mine. Might have two different flavors with the same hop. Yep. And that's a cool thing, too. Like today, we're going to talk about Cascade. Um, you know, and I've heard from growers out on the West Coast um, that, you know, the West Coast Cascade flavor profile, smell, even look is pretty different from east coast so that that's very interesting you know so maybe the same type of hop but you're getting two different hops if you will um so i'm gonna say let's jump right in first one we're gonna look at today is the cascade so just taking a quick look some uh, descriptors that i would have is you know pretty tight cone um medium sized cone i think really in the in yeah, the hop definitely world. in the medium you know um so, you know, taking a closer look at it here, um, beautiful for one, very tightly packed. I see you smelling, so let's give it a little. So Cascade is notorious for grapefruit, and that's really yes. what I get on the smell, grapefruit, which papaya, is interesting. Um, I have heard people use the term gooseberry, blueberry yep. sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Um, definitely a fruitier hop. Yep. Uh, they they grow a nice square. They're they're easily identifi identifiable. Yep. Just looking at the plant. Yeah, a lot of times people would be like, and we'll get into the next one, which is pretty identifiable too. But you know, a lot of times you see ten hop cones on a table. It's kind of tough to tell them apart. But Cascade is definitely one of those. You're like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's Cascade. Um, I I will say the Cascade too. I've always had the experience. You can smell it. Yeah. A lot of them smell yeah. similar. Cascade has the, that fruity smell to it. Sure. And Cascade is pretty notorious for really revolutionizing the West Coast IPA. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like you know, we have IPA drinkers today, hop heads, hop, hoppy beer, but that really originated in the West Coast. And Cascade was one of those superstars that said, hey, what if I use a lot of Cascade? Oh, what if I use a lot yeah. of malt? Oh, ooh, an IPA is born, if you will. Obviously, the IPA was born hundreds of years yes. ago, but this incarnation of really the hop revolution, I guess I'll coin it. Um, I think we can attribute a lot of that to this hop right here in Sierra Nevada in general. Yeah. Honestly, they've done wonderful um, things with this hop and their use with this hop. So could probably talk about it all day, but to wrap it up, um, alpha acids on Cascades or range. I, I know usually it's tough, find but them five to seven. Okay. Usually in there, not yep. super high, not super low. Yep. Um, I don't, I'll be honest with you. I brew beer. I talk a lot about beer. I'm not 100% sure if I know what their designated use is. Are they a dual purpose? Or I know I thought they were bittering for a I'm while or flavor I'm pretty sure aroma. they are currently listed as both. That's what I would think. But my own personal style, I think something like that. There's so many options out there with higher alpha acids. And, and a little cleaner, honestly. But save, save it for flavor. Yeah, agreed. you know. Or Definitely. dry hopping, yep, flavor, hopping, aroma. Very, very much for dry, dry hopping. Dry hopping. Um, awesome. So let's move on to the next, which is one of my personal favorites in terms of the, the growing world, and this is the Mighty Chinook. A much bigger cone. Yeah, so you can see that... Uh, I think some pine cones growing here. That's a little different, and I'll do a quick little comparison. So Cascade chinook 
Love Chinook, as you can see just from a visual perspective, pine cone. Yeah. Looks very much like a pine cone. Um, it's looser. They, they seem to yeah. break out from yep. the, the actual right center. Yep, so Chinook's a little higher in alpha acid. Um, you know, I think anywhere 12 to 14 in that range, would you agree? Yeah, generally? I have seen some get up there towards 15. Yep. Um, it, it's a wonderful hop, really piney, yes. resiny, yep. a woody kind of. And my father-in-law, this is one of his favorite hops. It just, yeah, one of mine too. He brews these beers that they, they're just reminiscent of a walk through the woods, Yeah. you know? And yep. it it's all contributed to that Chinook that he just bombs right in there yeah i love using it um in black ipas so it's, it's a i really you know i yep. really like this along with simcoe but uh in black ipas i also like using this around christmas time for obvious reasons yep. pine yep. um vigorous grower as you can see um carries a lot of the lupulin powder um inside of it um just a great dual purpose this is a, a good bittering hop it's a wonderful wonderful um, but hop. you can also use it for flavor you can also use it for aroma um, that real pine comes through in, with the aroma and the dry hop. Exactly. Um, unmistakable sap almost. You know, yeah. Just that. Yeah. Just pine sap. Um, awesome hop for sure. Very much reminds me of a pine cone. Everything about that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. From looks to, to taste to feel. Um, so the next one we'll dive into is a little bit different. What's that song? One of these things does not belong. Um, so this is yeah. Fuggle. Um, so we can see much smaller cone, but also feathered out, which is kind of interesting, um, but real uh, small. I can smell that one from yeah, here. Yeah, this that... one. Very unusual. This one is just dank garlic onion, which I'm not going to say is definitely what I would call fuggles hops. Um, no, that's really interesting, though, because I've... I found other hops similar, but nothing quite as you know pronounced as the garlicky yeah. you get in that. But the flavors you get from that are so far from garlicky. It's more earthy. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Hollertau always always presented itself that way to me. Um, one of the varieties I grow, it's very similar. It smells like a garlic or a chivey yeah. onion, and the flavors of floral. You know, spicy. No, yeah. it's it's really unusual. Yeah, uh, Fuggle is a traditional yeah. hop. You know, um, usually used in pilsners and and more. Uh, a lot of your English style. Yep. Yeah, um, not really a, a popular American hop um, anymore, but still, you know, great to grow. I've also read um, before when you get that garlicky, kind of oniony flavor, some of that could be driven by temperature, um, weather conditions, and yeah. things like that. Because there's, yeah. there's another hop out there called Summit. And Summit's a dwarf hop. Um, oh. So I won't get too much into that, but basically most hops grow you know, 20 feet. Um, if you look at the American Hop Dwarf Association, um, they've really kind of done a lot of clinical trials um, on hops that grow 10 feet. That's very interesting. Yeah. I, I haven't had any experience with that at all. Yeah. I've so, heard of them. Yep. That's... So Summit's a dwarf hop. It grows about 10 to 12 feet. And uh, when it first came out, it threw this very nice, almost reminiscent of the Cascades. So oh. grapefruity, berry, things like that. As it kind of developed, they noticed this oniony garlic flavor taking over. And they really didn't know why. And then they did a lot of studies in this, that, and the other and attributed it to the weather conditions. Hmm. Certain years where they had, um, you know, they keep track of all their water, where they had, we'll say, you know, a gallon of water per day throughout the summer. Yeah. They had, you know, citrus-like attributes where they bumped that up and did two gallons of water a day. They started to get this garlicky and, and thing. So very so, interesting. So you're at a how, place where you can control your flavor. Exactly, that, which is kind of cool. So I think that's something that you know, going forward in, in hop production, that that people might uh, look into and and, yeah. and see. So. Well, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I'm pretty solid on this, mm -hmm. but your Fuggle is actually one of the parent lineages of the Cascade. I, I believe the other correct. was a Golding variety. Yeah, I think you're um, correct. So, so I mean, so interesting, interesting things coming yep. out. So next we're going to talk about another cool hop, another favorite of mine, Saz. Oh, a noble variety. Yes. Very nice. Um, so if you look at this in comparison to the Cascade, I'm not sure I'd be able to tell those two apart right there. 
there the smell the smell would yes. set them apart yep. but they de they do definitely look the same so you probably know a little bit more about saws than I do. So I'm going to let you go ahead and tell the folks about, about saws a little bit more. Saws is one of the noble varieties of hops. It's from the Czech Republic is its hometown, so to speak, its yep. origin. The others are all from Germany. Okay. So this is the one noble hop that is not from Germany, be it Hollertau, Tettnang, uh, Hirschbrucker. So the saws has been used so, so long it's ridiculous. Yep. Um, it's you know the forefather of, of hops, if you will, gotcha. or one of. Yep. And you can expect to find that not every one of them, obviously, but German pilsners, lagers of almost any type. You know, Helles. Um, I know Trop. They use saws in a, a number of their beers. Yeah. Um, so very universal. It's very universal, it. but it's also. For balanced beers, I think, if yep. you wanted a hop forward, citrusy, fruity beer, you wouldn't use this. Right. Um, very floral, um, undertones of spice, mm -hmm. but it's very earthy and neutral. Um, and I, I don't, I don't want to say neutral in a bad way. Yeah. It just, it doesn't dominate right. with fruitiness like a, the other ones. And a lot of those beers that you're describing, you you don't want that. You exactly. want the balance. You know, you, you want, want a refreshing the... helles. You don't want to drink it and go, whoa, it tastes like fruit. No, right. you want that toasty, yep. crisp awesome pills or yep. lager and even though folks out there may not like hoppy beers shame on you um you know every beer needs bitterness every beer needs a balance people say oh i don't like hops in beer well you do because yes. if you like any beer at all you like hops in beer um beer would just be sweet and malty and very gross actually i think without the balance of hops now does it have to be prominent and forward no um, but it's there to balance the beer yeah. out and talking about alpha acids, Saz is super low. It is. Super low. And it's still, they've used it for bittering for years. Talking um, like 3 4%, sometimes it, even lower than that? I I've, mean, Traditionally, and I don't think I've seen anything really outside of 3 to 4. Okay. I can't recall anything higher. There, yeah. It could be out there. Yep. Um, I've been surprised before. Yeah. But Saz is definitely a lower one. It is. And that, that might contribute towards those earthy tones you get too. Cause okay. As you start throwing more of the actual green vegetable right. matter in yep. to get that same bitterness that you'd get less green of that, mm -hmm. you start to get that actual yeah, it's it, actually basically more from plant the in your beer. Yeah, so that's a good point. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, so the hop cone itself um, is really just a vessel for yes. the lupulin powder. Now I'm going to attempt to try to do something here which is basically cut this in part. And I'm guessing you can see that. So inside here, there's lots of lupulin sacs. I'm not sure that's a technical term, but I like to say that. Which is basically a small little sack that holds the lupulin powder. The lupulin powder itself is actually what bitters the beer, not the hop cone. The hop cone itself is literally a vessel. It's taking that powder and delivering it into the beer. Exactly. There's oils, powders, yep. and resins. Yep. Thirty percent, I believe, is the magic number. Okay. About thirty percent of that hop cone is all that the brewers really utilize. Right. Um, I mean, here's just a small example: mm. a CO2 extraction of the hop oils yep. and resins. So that's what it, all that yellow lupulin powder would look like in in that little syringe there. Exactly. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that too. So you have whole cone hops, which I'm going to say a lot of people still use. I think there's a trend to, to get away from it due to a yeah, lot of reasons. I've seen but... a few different things. Um, I mean, you got professional breweries that will use it out of like, no, we're going to use this because yep. it hasn't been processed. Yep. Uh, it's very traditional. Yep. Um, so, you know, you got that, that aspect. But then you also have people who, you know, pellets take up a lot less room. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about that. So um, whole cone hops. Uh, also pelletize hops. Um, so basically take this and compress into pellets yeah. and you can use it that way. Um, then you can take the actual um, lupulin in here, extract it, make a hop extract, yeah. if you will. And now they're actually getting into basically straight lupulin powder where they're able to extract that powder and make it into a pellet and you can use it that way. So as you can see, hops are super awesome. We could 
talk all day. Yeah, about I didn't even get hops. into the Neo-Mexicanos yet. Right, so maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll have a part two to this, but uh, these are whole cone, fresh picked hops. Um, if you have a chance to go to a local hop yard, please do learn a little bit more about it. It's pretty awesome. Also, we have a lot of information on our website, Hop Ridge Farms. Um, so dive into hops, love them, enjoy them, smell them. And